Hi, God bless everyone. This is Elsie Valentine. I want to start by reading Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 and 2. And the word of God says, Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. In the story of Abraham and Isaac in the Old Testament, you will learn of Abraham's obedience, his sacrifice, and the offering which he presents to the Lord. Through this offering, it will reveal a remarkable faith in which Abraham had toward God. It also points to the future sacrifice of God's only son, Jesus Christ, in the New Testament. So verse 1 says that God tested Abraham. And Abraham's response to God was, Here I am. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, verse 8, the prophet Isaiah says to the Lord, Here am I, send me. He was saying that he was here on earth for a specific purpose, and he wanted that purpose to be of the Lord's. Abraham saying, here I am, which means I am ready. He was ready to do as the Lord would instruct him to do. The Bible says that God tells him, take now your son, your only son, whom you love. In John chapter 3, verse 16, a very famous verse and chapter that everyone knows, it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God loves this world so much that he gave such a precious gift for it, his son. And through this gift, we receive salvation in Jesus Christ. God wanted Abraham to offer up Isaac to him, the son that he loved. It mentions that in Genesis chapter 22, verse 2. If you read the chapters before this, you will come to learn of Abraham's wife, Sarah, how she was having issues with bearing him a child. And so she offers to Abraham her maidservant, Hagar. And Hagar and Abraham, they do have a son together, which is called Ishmael. That's a whole nother story. <laughs> but in the story here, the Lord made a promise to Sarah. And he told Sarah, even at an old age, that she would bear a son. And she laughed at the Lord. See, one thing about the Lord is that he's faithful to fulfill his promises and his word. Numbers chapter 23 verse 19 says that God is not a man that he should lie or a son of a man that he should change his mind. Has he said and will he not do it or has he spoken and will he not fulfill it? God is faithful to fulfill his word. He's faithful to complete his promises. So if God is faithful to complete his promises, we have to do the same in our offering, in our sacrifices, in the commitments that we make before the Lord, because God is the one who sees and knows all things. And so God tells Abraham to go and offer up Isaac as a burnt offering. So what is a burnt offering? If you read the book of Leviticus, chapter 1, you will learn of the offerings that the Lord had commanded the Israelites through Moses as to what they were going to offer up to the Lord and how they were to do it. The Hebrew word for burnt offering actually means to ascend, which means literally to go up in smoke. And that smoke from the sacrifice would ascend to the, to the heavens, to God, where he is, and it would be a soothing aroma to the Lord. And this sacrifice or this offering that they would present to the Lord on the altar would be laid out on this Achaia wood overlaid with bronze. And whatever they were going to sacrifice on this altar, it had to be completely destroyed except for the hide. You ask yourself this question, because I did. Why would God want Abraham to sacrifice his only son? 
Well, if you read Isaiah chapter 53, verse 7, it says, Like a sheep being led to the slaughter, or a lamb that is silent before her shears, he did not open his mouth. Everything that we read about in the Old Testament leads to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in the New Testament. The way that God wanted Abraham to offer up his only son, Isaac, as the Bible describes him being the only son whom he loves. That's the same way our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, also was offered up as a sacrifice. The entire Bible points to Jesus, especially here in this chapter 22 of Genesis. We can see a comparison between Isaac and Jesus. They were both beloved sons. They were both born into miracles. One woman, Sarah, who couldn't bear or have children. And we all know the story of Mary, how she became pregnant as well. Both sons carry the wood. The Bible tells us that Jesus carried his cross. And if you keep reading in the book of Genesis, you will see that Isaac also carried the wood that Abraham was going to use to place him as an offering to the Lord. The wood that was used was a kale wood. It was a specific wood that they would use in the Old Testament. You can still find some of it here and there. It's very pricey. It's a very expensive wood. But both Jesus and Isaac both carried this wood to make it to the place and where they were going to be offered up. Jesus being Jesus walking down the road of Calvary and being sacrificed, crucified on the cross for our sins. And here you have Isaac who is going up to the mountain with his father and he's being led, as Isaiah said, as a sheep being led to the shears. He had no idea what was going to take place. He just knew he was going with his father to do a sacrifice. In both of these stories, with Isaac and the story of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, both cases show how the father leads the son and the son follows in obedience towards his own death. God was so pleased with the offering that Abraham was going to present his only son and how faithful Abraham was in keeping his promise to the Lord, not turning back, not being fearful, giving unto the Lord what belonged to him, knowing that the Lord gives and the Lord takes away, knowing that when God places something in your hands that is valuable, you give it back to him because in his hands, it's the best place to be in. And when Abraham gets to the place in which he's ready to offer up his son Isaac. Genesis chapter 2 verse 6 says that, So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife. And the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. Then he said, Look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. In verse 9 it says, Then they came to the place of which God told him, and Abraham built an altar. And there he placed the wood in order, and he bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Verse 11, powerful verse. But the angel of the Lord came to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, here I am. Here I am. When you are getting ready to offer a sacrifice to the Lord, maybe it's your time. Maybe it's, it's um, your fasting. Maybe it's just time that you want to spend with the Lord. Whatever it is that you're offering to the Lord. Maybe it's even in your offering financially that you're giving to the Lord. God only acts 10%. And some people struggle with just giving 10%. But it's only 10% that God wants from you. Say to the Lord as Isaac, I'm sorry, as Abraham said, Here I am. 
Isaiah the prophet also said it too. Lord, here I am. Here am I. Here I am. Means I'm ready, Lord, whatever you want me to do, whatever your plan and purpose is for my life, I am here, Lord. Instruct me. Show me the way. Abraham didn't know the way, but God told him he will lead him to the place in which he would bring his offering to the Lord, a place where he will sacrifice something so precious, something he loved so much, his only son. And when Abraham follows in the instructions of the Lord, in verse 15 of Genesis chapter 22, it says, then the Lord, then the angel of the Lord came to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, by myself, I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, blessing, I will bless you. And multiplying, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sand in which is on the seashore and your descendants shall possess the gates of their enemies. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned to his young man and they rose and went together to Beersheba and Abraham dwelt in Beersheba. Hallelujah. Giving an offering unto the Lord is giving him it with all your heart, with all that is within you, not withholding nothing. When you don't withhold nothing from God, he will command the blessings to pour out upon your life. Deuteronomy chapter 28. And I always love these blessings because I have it in my house over my door and I'm always praying it over my mom. It says, blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of the ground of your ground and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle and the offsprings of your flocks. Blessed shall be your basket and your knitting bow blessed shall be when you come in and blessed shall be when you go out that is such a powerful blessing when you give unto God what belongs to God whether it's your 10 percent in your offering your tithes don't withhold nothing back from the Lord it's not that you give and you expect something in return. That's not the way it works. When Abraham went to offer up Isaac, he wasn't expecting anything in return from the Lord. We should never expect anything from the Lord. But when we wake up every day and we open up our eyes and we have breath to breathe, we say, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, because you woke me up today. Thank you, Lord, because there's a plan and purpose, Lord. Father God is still in effect. It's still there. And I'm ready. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Do your will in me. What are you offering to God? What are you giving him? What sacrifices are you making? Are you spending too much time watching TV and filling your mind with all the junk of this world? Are you praying for the world? Are you sacrificing the time that you're spending with others when you should be spending it in the time with the Lord. What offering are you presenting to him? Is it something that you love so much and you say, Lord, here it is. Lord, because you're the God who gives and the God who takes away. I don't expect nothing from you, Lord, but I only ask that your blessings be upon my life. So Father, in this day, what are we giving you? What are we offering up to you? Are we giving you the best of us or are we giving you partial of us? Ask yourself in this day that question and let the Lord lead you as he did with Abraham. And if he brings you to a place where he asks you to make a sacrifice unto him, then make that sacrifice unto the Lord. Maybe it's spending more time in prayer. Maybe it's spending more time in his word. Maybe it's fasting. Maybe it's just going out and doing evangelist work for him. Whatever it may be, just ask God, Lord, where do you want me to go? What do you want me to do? And let the Lord lead you. May you have a blessed day. May you continue seeking his face. Don't give in. Don't give up. Look to the cross. Look to the heavens. Look to the hills. Because that's where your strength comes from. It comes from the Lord. And remember, say, Lord, here am I. God bless you. Have a wonderful day in the Lord. Amen.